sweet, sticky, tangy chicken. Oh, I love this Filipino adobo dish. I love a dish where the ingredients are so simple, you've usually got them in your pantry. Ah, oh, so good. So our marinade is super simple. Uh, we just want a little bit of brown sugar. And what we're after here is we're making like a sweet, sour, tangy kind of marinade, which will then turn into a sauce as well. So that's the sweet. And then we've got our salty with the soy sauce. And then we're gonna get the tangy with our vinegar. So I'm using an apple cider vinegar. You could just use white vinegar, rice vinegar, any kind of vinegar you've got. And now we want our flavoring. So I've got some ginger, finely grated, and a good hit of black pepper. Really want some nice pepper notes in our finished sauce. And some garlic. So I'm just gonna use half of this garlic first because we're gonna use a little bit more of that garlic later on. So there's a whole bunch of meat options for Filipino adobo. I'm choosing chicken drumsticks today. I love drumsticks. They're cheap. Everyone in the house loves them. Crowd pleaser, all of those things. All right, now pour the marinade on top of those. Get everyone in there acquainted with that marinade. And now if you had the time and you're really organized, you could leave this to marinate overnight, but I often don't have the time because I'm not that organized. So 30 minutes will do. Now what we need to do is brown the chicken off first. So I just want a little bit of oil in my pan. And just do this in batches. It's important when you're browning anything that you give it a lot of space so that your meat is browning and not stewing. We'll get to the stewing part later. So this is all about creating color and flavor. So all of that awesome brown, beautiful caramelization, that is pure flavor. Turn those pieces over. Just transfer those back out into another dish. Let's brown those other pieces. Okay, so now what we're left with is all this beautiful flavor in the bottom of the pan. I'm gonna add in just a little bit more oil. And then I wanna get my onions straight in there. And just a little pinch of salt. I always love to season my onions as they're cooking. I do think it sort of helps to draw out the moisture from the onion and then make it a little sweeter. Now here's where you wanna be patient, guys. You really wanna get that onion nice and soft and translucent because that's gonna give you the best flavor in your finished dish. Now once they're nice and softened a little, I'm gonna add in my garlic and some chili. Now I've got quite a bit of red chili here. You can use less or you can leave the chili out. Totally up to you. Okay, so now I wanna pop my chicken pieces back in. And then now our marinade becomes our sauce. So I'll pour that all over and I just want some bay leaves in there as well. It's gonna give us a really beautiful flavor. Just make sure each of those pieces of chicken is nice and snug in that beautiful little sauce. And I just want a little bit of water as well, just to make sure we've got enough liquid to braise our chicken. Now I'm gonna turn that heat down a little and just pop a lid on there. And that just needs to simmer away for 30 minutes. Ah, oh, now look at that gorgeous chicken. Ah, oh, so good. And you need to be really gentle because it's almost literally falling off the bone. Ah, oh, so good. Now just take those bay leaves out and now we're left with this beautiful braising liquid. So what we wanna do is simmer that down about 10 or 15 minutes. Be patient guys, because what we're looking for is a beautiful, thick, sticky, glossy sauce. Now that my friends is what I call perfection. Look at that sauce. Okay, we're gonna put that over our chicken. And then just a final scattering of spring onion. Super fragrant basil and chili spiked chicken. Oh, this is one stir fry you'll love making any night of the week. This is my Thai basil chili chicken. Yes, stir fries can be a really beautiful thing. Even a weeknight quick stir fry, this recipe is testament to that. Just wait till you try it. All right, let's make the stir fry sauce first. Really simple because of course it is the weeknight. I want some oyster sauce some fish sauce and some dark sweet soy sauce. I love adding this one into my stir fries because it adds a really beautiful color and that dark caramel color just seems so much more special. <laughs> a little dash of sugar. I do find the sugar does balance out the saltiness, but feel free to leave it out if you like. And then a little dash of corn flour. Just give that a mix. 
Okay, so I'm using dried chilies here. I'll often use dry or fresh, depending on what I've got in my kitchen at home. But I always keep these dried in the pantry just for dishes like this. So easiest way is just to use some scissors to chop those. And then the vegetable I find I'm most often adding to my weeknight stir fries is baby bok choy because I don't have to slice a whole bunch of vegetables. I literally just slice it in half. <laughs> the minimal amount of work required for maximum vegetable value. All right, let's get stir frying. I want some oil in here. Now, of course, you don't have to do this in a wok. A really large, wide frying pan is great for stir frying as well. And you want some garlic in here and some onion. And add in those chilies. And already my day is looking immediately brighter. I love the smell of garlic and onion and chilies in a wok. Mm, it smells like home to me. All right, now, chicken is going in and the real secret to wok frying or stir frying in a large frying pan is to give your meat enough space and heat contact. So push everything to the side and get your meat into the center there and then immediately push it out. I want as much chicken coming into contact with the hot pan as possible. So the whole point here is to try and sear this chicken and not stew the chicken. If it's all bunched up, it'll steam and you'll get a lot of liquid, which I think results in an insipid stir fry. So just let that hot pan do its thing for about a minute or so. And now you can do some stir frying. And again, spread everything out. and just let that sear for another half a minute or so. So I guess this is completely different to how you see tiny chefs in restaurants cooking, you know, quickly stir frying. The thing is that they've got really high heat and like commercial grade woks. Whereas at home, I find the heat is never hot enough to cook everything through quickly enough when you're moving it all around. So this is my special technique anyway. So once I can see that chicken is just about cooked, I'm gonna add in my sauce. Toss that through. Mm, this is starting to smell very good. Now in goes my bok choy. And now the ingredient that's going to turn this stir fry into something amazingly fragrant and beautiful is Thai basil. So you can find Thai basil at any Asian grocery store or Thai supermarket and you're looking for the basil with the purple stems and it has such a beautiful aniseed kind of fragrance. Look, if you can't get a hold of Thai basil, regular Italian basil is going to do just fine to really kind of elevate your weeknight stir fry, so don't worry too much. The thing that you do want is a lot of basil. This is not a garnish, it's almost like another vegetable in here. Now toss that through and oh wow, that basil smells so beautiful. Something about the smell of Thai basil that immediately makes me hungry. Okay, so I'm gonna get this out onto a plate with some rice. So there you go, a stir fry that couldn't be any simpler, but is still really special because, you know, you always deserve special during the week. That's what I think anyway. Now let's have a look here. Some chili, some basil, some chicken. Mm. That basil flavour has gone right through the sauce and it's such a lovely, salty but slightly sweet sauce. Mm. But that basil and the chilli, that's the goods. Mm. So good. Noodles stir fried in a porky, chickeny kind of sauce. This is one epic one pan dish you need to know how to make. My version of Filipino pancit bihon noodles. Okay, I love this one because everything happens in the one pan. I don't even have to cook my noodles separately. So good. But there is a little trick that I've got for getting some extra flavor into these noodles. So just wait and see on that one. Uh, now, in the Philippines, these are called pancit bihon. If I've pronounced that incorrectly, someone will let me know, I'm sure. But the pancit ihon refers to the type of noodle. So that's the rice vermicelli noodles, that's these ones here. But let's do our pork and chicken first. So I've got some pork belly here, 
And the reason I'm using pork belly is that I want to get a lot of flavour and fat from this pork belly. But I do want to remove the skin. So you just want to make a little incision in the top here and then just hold your knife down and then wiggle the skin onto the knife. And that will make sure that we take off the skin without taking off too much of the fat. And then just slice that pork belly into little thin pieces. Now put your pork straight into a cold pan because I want that heat to slowly start to render the fat from the pork. So while waiting for that to happen, I'll just grab my chicken thigh. Using thighs means we're going to get some extra fat and flavour here. And the chicken goes straight in as well. Just going to add a little pinch of salt here. So now that I've got some sears sizzling going on and I can see I'm starting to get some colour on the bottom. So this is everything a quick stir fry. Now that I've got that beautiful burnished colour, I'm going to remove the chicken and the pork, being sure to leave that fat behind in the pan. Okay, so now we're starting off with a base of flavour that we wouldn't have if we just used plain old oil. So to that I'm going to add some garlic and some onion. And now some vegetables. You can use a mix of whatever kind of vegetables you've got at home. I've got some carrot here and some snow peas and some Chinese cabbage as well. Now when those vegetables are just barely softened, I'm going to add in my soy sauce and some dark soy sauce. This is going to give us a really rich, beautiful colour. Some oyster sauce. A little touch of sugar, which I do find is quite necessary here to kind of counteract all those really salty flavours. This gives it a little bit more depth. And then some chicken stock. Now at this point we add in our noodles. So these are going to go straight into our sauce. Just let them soak flip them every now and then and just like magic they will soak up all of that flavour and become really tender. So after only a couple of minutes here you can see that sauce has all but been absorbed by those noodles and we're left with a beautifully flavour packed noodle dish here. So now I'm going to add back in my pork and my chicken. I'm going to season that with a little bit of pepper. And some spring onions go in as well. Now just get those luscious noodles out onto a serving plate. And now to make the whole thing complete, just a little lime wedge here because that extra spritz of tang at the end is really delicious. So there you go guys, Filipino chicken and pork noodles and all in one pan. So good. Squeeze of lime. Wow. You will not believe the flavour that every single strand of noodle has in this dish. It's porky, it's chickeny, salty, crunchy, oh, all the things. This is one epic noodle dish, guys.